Hello everybody, this is Vangelis, I'm doing a vlog, I'm doing an unboxing, which I don't usually do, but this is a Kickstarter thing that I waited like a year and a half, two years for, so I figure, in this one case, because I was also an all-in backer, why don't we see what one of those looks like when you're an international who chose to wait to get it all in one box, as opposed to them Americans who got it in two boxes. Uh, internationals were given the option of getting that first box, or because it's more expensive to ship stuff to Canada and elsewhere now from the States, waiting, uh, and then ostensibly getting a, a bonus figure from uh, one of the waves uh, to compensate for the additional weight. So this should be everything from the all-in, plus a few extras, because the way that I backed this is I backed like about 150 bucks back when the Kickstarter happened. 150, 200, it's like some like decent amount, but not an all-in amount. And then there was a period of time that passed, and after that period of time passed, what's this? Ooh, that has my address on it. Here, let me show you. Anyway, uh, after that, that amount of time passed, it was enough time that uh, they got a backer kit style thing going. I don't think it was actually backer kit. I can't remember. And I had enough extra money at the time to just turn it into an all-in, but I didn't understand that right away. So first I got a bunch of extra figures and then found out I could have turned it into an all-in, so I did some conversion. Anyway, this is an all-in with some extra snake ladies, basically. So this is what the thing looks like uh, when you get it open. And that's a pretty glorious to see. That's, that's a packed box. This thing's heavy, too. There's this t-shirt thing saying I got hacked. Uh, one could just say I got delayed waiting for Boss Fight Studio. Ha ha. That's, that stopped being funny a while ago. Here's the accessory sets. These are uh, little things where you get a bunch of bits and pieces. Uh, let me turn this exposure down. That's crazy. Stop being crazy. So these are little accessory sets. Uh, I, I think that backers got one of each. Here's the bone color one. These were originally going to be in bags, but that apparently put the spear, I think, at risk of breaking, so they ended up in boxes. But it sounds like they're just rattling around in there. I was wondering if there was going to be, like, a, a clamshell or something designed as well, but that probably is asking for a bit much. Oh, look, it's Talos! This guy, I kind of felt like, hey, maybe I should have got another one. Then he was in that first wave, the, the aftermarket price on him went crazy, so I'll just I'll live with one. And this is this is just an empty spacer, I think. Is it? Oh no, that's the poster, the art print. Adam Rich's Medusa turning a dude to stone art print. I like the notion of putting it in a box. This is a straight up spacer. That's just nothing. And this, this is the Vitruvian Hacks piece of cardboard. And then in here you got something that looks a lot more like a toy shipping case. This is the meat, bones, and sinew of what everyone was waiting for. So I'm going to move to a different position and stack up these boxes that rather loudly and brazenly assert that there are no limits. And uh, let's start taking a look at something. I wanted to see what one of these accessory things looks like once it's been cut open. So here's the bone colored one. I believe, yeah, it's a oh, Ziploc bag. All right. Uh, a couple bags of things in here. I, I am happy about the Ziploc bag. I generally assume things are going to come in just taped baggies like this. So, well, I'm not going to say Ziploc bag. Best toy of the year. Uh, that's a nice touch. So I guess that's what, like, an example of an accessory set would look like. If you want to know what a box figure looks like, generally it's just, like, the clamshell they'd be in in a blister pack, except in a box. And I know I stand alone here, I think the boxes are cooler packaging than the big blister cards, but I'm always, I've always been about stackable packaging. That guy looks neat. He looks all oxidized. So I'll uh, set Talos down over there, push all this back out of the way, and start looking at some of the figures proper. Medusa is like, her, she and the Spartan are kind of like the figureheads of this whole thing. And uh, the one thing I'm curious about, this is not taped. Okay, that's cool. I was wondering if they were going to, I would say, waste time taping all this together, but they aren't. Although there is a little J-hook if you ever end up running a shop and want to hang these things up. So this is the idea of the packaging, where, as you can see, like, this is what would be in a box, and then you've got this over here. The art's cool. Like, this is striking packaging, uh, and, and I like it. I just like boxes more, because uh, I'm a weirdo. But I think that boxes, especially with a cut for a window, 
I believe that stuff ends up costing a bit more than something like this. And something like this is, like I said, way more visually neato. So, I see why they did it. But I just want to get on my little soapbox about how I like stackable boxes and how I think it's a bummer that 3A briefly did shoebox style packaging for their 112 figures and then went back to those ginormous blister cards. Anyway, what else have I got in here? We've got the Green Mamba Snake Lady. I think I've got two of these. I should have two of each Snake Lady, if I recall correctly. And two of these guys, the Disciples of Eurela. Uh, I got two of them because they're supposed to be brainwashed bodyguards for one of the Snake Sisters, so I thought, hey, why would she only have one bodyguard when she could have two? The Coral Gorgon is another Snake Lady, and this is the one that... Uh, after seeing, like, initial coverage of Wave 1 and seeing, like, final production pictures of all of them, I think this might end up being my favorite Snake Lady. Although, I am very won over by the Ringneck Gorgon from the convention exclusive pack. I got the, uh, the Amazon Elite from Kokomo Toys and that two-pack convention exclusive so I could mess with one of each of the bodies while I waited for this stuff. So I'm also not, like, dripping at the mouth seeing these figures for the first time as far as their actual size and physical hand feel. Like, I mess with them, but... Between the Coral Guard and this one, I think they might be my favorites. Oh, did I make it clear, like, the Snake Ladies can stand pretty well? They can't. The Amazon Warrior looks a whole lot like the Amazon Elite that I picked up from that Kokomo Toys shared exclusive with the other shop whose name I can't remember right at this moment. The Calubrida Guard is as blazingly orange as I thought. These are said to be, like, the elites of the Snake Ladies, so I feel like if I end up army building some more of them, I'll just stick to two of these. Uh, also, like, I like, I like Blazing Orange. This is hitting my upper limit as far as Blazing Orange, because that's Blazing Friggin' Orange. Order yourself up here, figure stack. Another Disciple of Euralia! We've all seen that. Stone Fist! This was, like, the, I think, the final stretch goal of the original stretch goals before this Kickstarter blew out of proportion and, like, a gajillion more stretch goals were created. I also just caught that this was the, the character idea was poss- like, not possibly, it was, uh, partially the brainchild of, uh, the fellow from General's Joe's, because this is like a blind guy. He was getting turned to stone, as you can see, arm first, because I guess Medusa's a weirdo, and so he gouged his eyes out so it would stop. Did you know that would stop you from turning to stone? Because I didn't. So he then, like, graffitied his shield, because I guess he was like, yo, character concept. And, uh, that's the kind of cool gradient going on, all kind of absorbing man style on his bicep. It's Eureli, the one with all the disciples! Uh, I was reading coverage of this line now that it's coming out. Just today, General Joe's put up their reviews of her wave and have called her possibly one of the best figures in the line. I felt like of the three bodies, well, of the two major bodies, the female body felt like a more impressive toy than the male body. Snake Lady, I think, is the most striking, but that's because she has a snake tail for legs. So of the bipeds, it makes sense that just a regular, like, female biped figure who doesn't have an armor piece possibly messing with her ab joint would end up feeling like one of the best. I'll find out once I pop these open. Which I probably won't be doing on this video. This is King Leonidas! Uh, apparently this guy has been selling extremely well in pre-sales and at conventions. So, uh, people from Boss Fight projected he might be one of the first whoa, sellouts once they put their stock up proper. Uh, once they finish shipping out the Kickstarter stuff and all the pre-order stuff, then they're gonna put stock up proper, and there might not be many Leonidasises. But yo, if you dig Scorpion Decos, there might still be lots of Myrmidons. This guy looks cool. I like this guy's shield. I like this guy's gold and black. That's classy. That's some gold-hemmed stuff. I just started playing Dark Souls last month. Can you tell? The Black Racer, secretly the super unpainted Gorgon Lady. I'm, uh, kind of disappointed when I found out that she apparently is just, like, it's just, just, she's black plastic, that's it. Uh, for whatever reason, I, apparently I was not the only one. I got the impression from the Kickstarter pictures of the painted prototypes there'd be something else going on with her. But she just looks like black plastic. That's okay! Not as exciting, though, as the others. Let's push this stack back and start a fresh one. Underworld Warrior! Also known as a figure I wish I had ordered a second one of when I found out how nicely done his paint job was, because I think that looks pretty choice. The uh, magma cracking also goes on underneath his armor, just on the bare figure. Uh, Would have been cool if it was as insane looking as on the artwork, but I guess there are upper limits to mass production. That artwork is, I think, the best artwork I've seen out of this whole project. 
I could have done with a print of that. Green Mamba. Snake Lady, we've seen one of those. Senno is like the old matronly sister of the three snake sisters. Well, like I say old, I say older looking. There's like... It looks like the inside of her bubble got little bits of paint here and there. But they don't seem to be off of her face. I wonder if this ended up getting used as like a test palette or something. There, you see those? Yeah, that weird stuff. That's on, that's on her bubble, not on her face itself. But that's real weird. Anyway, she's got a big head of snakes. And uh, I'm curious how that ends up feeling as far as weight and as far as uh, possibly hindering neck articulation. The Athenian warrior who is, as I understand it, basically what this guy was based off of. This guy came in the two-pack with that other uh, snake lady, the blue and orange one. The ring neck. Uh, I like this guy's headdress, though. That's pretty choice. That's pretty, uh... That's, that's Mardi Gras. That's ornamental. The cursed Spartan, who looks real cool. It's just that that Underworld one with all the cracked stuff looks like this guy, but cooler. Nonetheless, if you want to have, like, a statue man, that's what this dude can do. The Coral Gorgon! There were points, there were, there were like minutes at one point, one week, when people were starting to get these, where I was like, should I have just done that army builder add-on for ten of these at the discounted price? I don't know. More people were thinking about the army builder for this guy, the Spartan Warrior. I don't believe anyone did the kooky backer option of like just getting 300 Spartans, but apparently there are at least one or two people that are going to try in the aftermarket. Best of luck to them, that will probably look real cool. And here's my bonus figure I chose, a second Medusa, so I can take one Medusa's snake tail, add it to the other one, and then have me a double Medusa. Also, her armor parts look really cool, so I felt like if I was going to have dupes of armor parts and weapons, I wouldn't mind having dupes of her stuff. But yeah, I figure since Medusa's like the, the queen of the snake people, she should have the double length snake tail, so I'm going to try making a double Medusa once I pop all that open. Which I'm not doing on this video. I'm just looking at stuff. Here's the skeletons. This is like the... This this was like the, okay, we are out of stretch goals. What if we make a skeleton figure? Blap! Okay, I guess we're making a skeleton figure. So, uh, we're getting one of each. There's like the white one, the kind of gross-looking yellow one, uh, the black one, the ghostly purple one, and then this was the bonus figure made for everybody. Whoever ordered anything that involved a figure, I think, from the Kickstarter, or it might have just been anybody, got this pink skeleton, which was made to as a, a bonus for the long wait. That's kind of cute. It's bright pink. It's a nice plastic color. Boom! Boxed figures. The Tartarus Guard. I'll pop these open so you can at least see what the figures look like. Tartarus Guard is like... The Underworld Amazon. Get out of my way. And the main thing about her, and again, this is another figure where I kind of wish I'd ordered too once I saw how she turned out. She's got a straight up, like, skeleton painted all over her actual body. And, uh, that effect is friggin' cool. Also, it's pink on black, and that's like black light paint, rave party stuff. As for Precursed Medusa, this was like. In the original pitch of, like, five figures, she was the fifth. She was the Kickstarter exclusive. She's now not a Kickstarter exclusive, but a uh, boss fight web store exclusive. And she's basically Eureli, but green, with the Medusa snake hair. The upside of this figure is if you get tired of the base Medusa having that kind of face, you can swap this head in for a more, like, calm Medusa who's scheming and plotting to, I don't know, bite people. And then there are the two two-packs, which... Oh, I forgot which one of these is Kickstarter exclusive. It's this one. Celestial one's Kickstarter exclusive. This one is the Afterlife one. I want to see what this looks like, because this is with all the glow-in-the-dark bits and pieces. And this is a uh, Gorgon who, by being a ghost, I guess regained her legs, fighting a... Uh, which one is it? It is a warrior from the other side. Spartan! It's an Afterlife Spartan. That stuff looks kind of kooky cool. I heard that these armor parts on the translucent blanks figures is, uh, to, to reuse a word I tend to use a lot, striking. As for the Celestial set, I've been curious what this looks like in person, because they were pretty clear during the Kickstarter that, like, even the, the painted sample was just them painting dots on a figure, and they were going to have to figure out how to produce this in translucent with the sparkles. That looks neato. So it's like a sparkly, smoky, clear plastic with purple, like, 
is that woven through the plastic in the molding or is that a paint app? I can't tell. But then they've got these like star dot constellation paint apps on their shields and on their actual bodies. So that effect is uh, neato to say the least. I gotta make room for the last bunch of this. Get out of my way! Make way for the blanks! These are the two blanks that shipped in the first uh, wave, the first whack of stuff before Chinese New Year, the gray mail and the translucent orange mail. It's kind of funny those are separate, because this is like the everyone else's blank, so it's clear like they set stuff aside for first wave even if you weren't getting it shipped in the first wave. And these are like in lots of colors. That's, that's a whole lot of colors. There are, I think, is it five or ten of these? that we're not getting in this because they were uh, moved into production after the Kickstarter, which is basically male and female in every color is on the shop. Backers, when we went in, some colors, I think there were three colors that were male and female, but then all the other colors were male or female. So like I've got this clear blue man, but I don't have a clear blue lady, but that is now being produced and up on the store. Whereas I have like this, not pink as the skeleton, but paler pink lady but there's no pink guy, but there is a pink guy on the store now. So the blanks are the cheapest, unpainted, uh, include one of every part of the major buck figure. They're made for customizing, etc., etc. Maybe I'll blast some of this stuff back and then we'll take a look at a skeleton and a blank. All right, I'm gonna pop open the cheese skeleton. Uh, I caught from other videos that like, you look at this and you're like, oh, okay, I guess I gotta snip this open and then no, actually there's a, a resealable baggy system here. So you just gotta peel that off. The skeletons have these clear bits to let them use armor in the stand because they're skeletons and thus thinner. There's a, I think General Joe's put up a whole guide about how that works. But I just want to see how the skeleton feels because this is, I've felt all the other figures, the male figure, the female figure, the gorgon with the snake tail, that all, stuff all feels great. This is the only piece of tooling I haven't really, or piece of major tooling I haven't messed with. Uh, and it is thin. This feels like kid gloves material. The jaw moves, that's neat. Ball socket neck. These look like pin disc shoulders. There's a little bit of a soft detent to them. And then they swivel forwards. Do both of these feel okay? All right. Uh, then the elbow pegs in. The peg allows for bicep swivel, but what part of this folds forward? Where is the natural stop and start of, okay, there we go. So that's the elbow moving. There's the bicep swivel. I'm assuming there's a wrist joint. Oh, is there a hinge? Okay, oh, it looks like a fig art setup with like, there is a hinge on the peg and then the peg goes into the hand. So how do I get this elbow to move? All right. I don't know my anatomy well enough to know if I've got the bone facing the wrong way. Uh, I'm not sure. I think these, because these are intended to look anatomically correct. I think I'm, oh no, that looks like it's the wrong way. Turns out I do know my anatomy slightly enough to know when I'm seeing something that looks backwards. And then how does the waist work? There's a bit there. Is there a bit up there too? I can't tell. There is a waist joint. And then these are pin discs, I believe, the same as the shoulders. They feel the same. And okay, I thought these would V crotch in, but I guess they are T crotched in, which makes me happy because I hate I hate V crotch when the peg goes in at, like at an angle and then you have to adjust for it. Like these are going straight in. So for my personal taste, uh, that makes me happy. And uh, there's been a mold flash that fell off this guy here. I don't know if you saw that. There's a double jointed knee, I think. Yeah. And since he's a skeleton, I guess you can get a full curl on there because he doesn't have any of that pesky flesh getting in the way. Uh, where's the joint on this? Alright, how does this work? Is there a tilt? There is a tilt, so this works like the female figures. There's a thing on hacks where the male figures and female figures peg their feet in differently, which means the female figures have an ankle tilt while the male figures have a boot cut. I think the female figures got the better end of the deal there. Uh, speaking for my own biases. I'm convinced- this looks like there's a cup up there on this part of the spine, but I cannot tell precisely how that's supposed to move. I'll figure that out later, but that's the basic gist of a skeleton. 
Uh, let's just pop a blank. Which blank should we pop? Let's pop the this one. Clear man blank. Get out of there. That's the uh, the Vitruvian Hacks butt screw. That's the one screw you have to undo to fully disassemble these figures, because that undoes the whole pelvis area. You can't as easily pop the legs off uh, unless you unscrew that. I messed around with, with mine, and it's, it's a bit scary. Uh, the, the way the head works, it's actually on a double barbell ball joint to account for customizing with, like, Joes and Marvel Legends. Makes for a decent range of posability, though. Same thing with the abs. Got these pin disc shoulders. Uh, bicep swivel connected to the elbow joint. Got wrists. They include two sets of hands where one set, the wrist hinge, uh, goes inwards, like for holding handlebars. The other set, it bends downwards for holding swords. This whole first wave is about swords and not vehicles, so I appreciate that A, they included both, and B, that they included the one that is useful for swords. There's no waist swivel. Uh, there is just this ab joint. I've never found a waist swivel that seemed like it was intentional anyway. Is there a waist swivel? Oh, okay. This one has a waist swivel, so that just means that my clear purple guy had one that didn't work. Either that or I twisted a peg off. No, I can see it moving in there. There is a waist swivel. On the male figure, at least. I'm gonna pop open a female blank and figure this out now. Ball socket joints in the hips, double jointed knee. Uh, there is the ankle hinge forward, and as you can see, the foot pegs up into the leg. So it swivel side to side. Let me pop out a female blank and show you what I mean in the other sense. Let's go for the pink one. She's on top. Get out. Get out of... So, first, is there a waist joint on the female figure? This, yeah, okay, there does not seem to... It's not moving anyway, as easily, if it's even supposed to. Is there a clear female figure? Did they produce that for the backers. I don't think the... I think the clear female figures all happened after the fact, so I can't look in there easily to see. This is something where I'm gonna have to do a little bit of experimenting off-camera to figure out if stuff works. Otherwise, her arms all uh, work the same, and her arms are much thinner. Uh, neck works the same as well. The whole figure's much thinner, but the articulation all works just as well, which uh, is, I think, what makes the female figure more impressive than the male figure, because generally figures of this scale done at a mass production, female figures especially suffer male figures as well, from just like the rubbery plastic that tends to get used. Uh, it also, you might think there's a thigh swivel. There isn't. This is an outer cup. The, the way the ball socket works is the ball socket joint goes in, then this outer cup like seals it in. That's how the ball socket joint, like I guess, holds its tension without just relying on a like open cup. I've seen it done on the Facebook groups uh, where someone did a mod to just slice across here and turn the way that this cup piece mounts in into a working thigh swivel. So it's possible I haven't done it myself. Anyway, what I was talking about before, uh, so you see how the male foot plugs up into there, right? So it's like a, a foot swivel from side to side or a tilt forward and back. The female foot can tilt forward and back, but instead has an angular tilt because the way this plugs in is through a peg going into the foot rather than a peg on the foot going into the leg. Uh, so that's... That's interesting. I, I, I believe that at one point they were going to do, like, multiple foot parts, and I guess this just ended up working better for the, the thinner nature of the female leg. I've heard that this also means that the female figure is not as good at using its base when it doesn't have a flat-footed sculpt. I'm going to quickly try that out to solve my last piece of questioning I've got here. Like, we'll see. Maybe a bl on a blank this is not as much of a problem. Oh, wait, I think I'm getting what they mean now. Because on the Amazon figure, she's got the sandal sculpt, and it's already, like, the peg is kind of going in there, but there's not much for it to grip into. On this one, where there's, like, a whole, like, heel curvature, it seems like it's having a lot more trouble getting on there. Like, it's pegging in, but it's not pegging in flat. I think this means the stand is still usable, though. Which is, yeah, it's not going to end up looking flat-footed, really. Anyway... That's my initial, I wanted to record myself opening up my I bought too much stuff because I spent too much as a backer box. So I hope that was interesting. Uh, as for reviews of these figures, what I'm planning to do is like what I did with Combiner Wars. I kind of want to do an overview video where I focus on how the articulation works in the main male and female bodies. And then I'll do a video for the snakes. 
Or I might do it all in the overview. Basically, I want to do an overview that focuses on the, the core engineering, and then I want to do a video for each wave, and then for all the other ones in, in like a video, focusing more on their identities, on their paint schemes, and how their color layouts turned out. So that's, that's my rough plan. I don't know how well I'll follow it, and I don't really have an ETA on it. There's a lot of stuff here. But... I am real happy to see all of this realized. So thanks for watching this thing if you did. And uh, I'll get back to filming Pandanus now.